Thank you, Father. Please be seated. The theme of this season is fulfilling divine destiny. The Lord is set to shift us. Many of us are behind in destiny. Many of us are not where we are supposed to be for now. By his mercy, he's going to shift us. Yes, he's going to help us. It's not going to be by our power. It's going to be only by his mercy. And I want you to get ready because as the word of God is coming up, the hand of God is coming upon several of our, our lives for mighty encounter and transformation. Now, I want you to note, maybe as a way of reminding you, that God has a purpose for creating you and recreating you in Christ Jesus. That's what we call destiny, divine destiny. In Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10, he said, you are his workmanship, his masterpiece. A masterpiece is a, an, a work that is wrought with high level of intelligence and skill. God himself worked out your life. In Christ Jesus. He said, please, can you read it with me? One to go. For we are his workmanship. Created we are in Christ Jesus unto what? Unto good works. Which God has beforehand ordained that we should walk in them. That is to say, before the time, there is a preordained work. There is a predestined things that God has planned that you particularly will do. Like Jeremiah, he spoke to him in Jeremiah 1 verse 5, say, before you were conceived, I know you. And before you were born, I ordained you for an assignment. You are to be an international prophet. Prophet unto the nations. And of course, you know, this happened before Jeremiah was conceived. So he said, I know you. And it's not only Jeremiah, it's for everybody. That's why in some special cases in the scripture, you see God pre-informing the parents of the child about the child that is about to be conceived. Eh? When Samson was about to be conceived, God came to uh, the, 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 the parents, Manuel and the wife, and said, you are going to have a child. A child is coming. This is a person in eternity existing. There's an assignment you will have. That's in Judges chapter 13, 3 to 5. His assignment as he's coming is that he is going to begin to deliver the children of Israel from the Philistines. Verse, verse 15. He will begin to deliver the children of Israel from the hand of the Philistines. I think it should be verse 5 also. Verse 5, not 15. Verse 5. Yes. For lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come on his head. For the child shall be a Nazareth and unto God from the womb, womb. And he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. That is before Samson entered the womb. What is going to be has been preordained, predetermined. That is how it is for every man. Before Jesus was born, too, an angel came and said to the father to be, or I mean, presupposed father, Joseph, in Matthew 1 to 21, he said, You shall call his name Jesus because he's coming for a purpose. He's coming to save his people from their sins. The same thing happened about John the Baptist in Luke chapter 1, from verse 13 to 17. The angel came to Zechariah while he was carrying out his duty in the temple and said, your wife Elizabeth will conceive and give birth to a, a son called John. He said, He shall be great in the sight of the Lord. And he, he, he will go before the Lord in the spirit of Elijah to turn the heart of the fathers back to their you know, sons and to turn the heart of the children of Israel back to the Lord their God. What John will do, predetermined by God, the same thing for every man. So there is a divine agenda for your life. God is expecting that you should accomplish it in your lifetime. The work is so specific that no other person is ordained 
to do exactly what you are called to do or what you are born to do. God knows you by name and he has, he has marked you for that assignment. In his divine economy and agenda, he has given you a portion of participation, a partaker of his program in eternal calendar. That is to say, if you will align yourself to him, you will be able to discover that and be able to fulfill it and finish it. Paul was writing to the Colossians. I don't know how he, he just broke and began to advise them. Say, say to Archippus, Colossians 4 verse 17, that the ministry that you have received, make sure that you fulfill it. There's a particular ministry that you, Archippus, received from the Lord. Take heed that you fulfill it. Many people live and die without fulfilling their divine destiny. That's true. There are four categories of people. There are some that could not discover it at all in their whole lifetime. They live and they die. One of them was a man that died, died repenting at the cross. If you remember the Calvary uh, thief. Eh? He was not born to be a thief. But throughout his lifetime, he wasted his life doing so many things like we are doing today. He went to market. You are going to market. He washed clothes. You are washing clothes. He went to school. You are going to school. He, he did so many normal activities, but he did not know why he was created and born. So he couldn't discover, he couldn't fulfill that purpose. He died, you know, even though he was lucky to go to heaven at the point of death. But the truth is that he missed the entire purpose. There's a gap in his life in eternal calendar of God. Some people, the second category of people, might discover it. Be started breathing to know the of God's purpose for his life and he's pushing to fulfill it. He will always want to distract and discourage and you know cause situations that will depress that person in order to make sure that the person did not continue. And then only very few people start, continues, and fulfill their divine ordained destiny. What does it mean to fulfill divine destiny? It is to discover what you are created and recreated in Christ Jesus to do. Begin to do it until you finish it when? In your lifetime. That lifetime is very important. Because, you know, some of us that has been in examination hall before, you will notice that in most cases, it's not as if you don't know what to write. But the time is not enough for you to write it. So it's not about saying, I know what I'm suppo supposed to do. I know what I'm called to do. Are you sure that you are where you are supposed to be in that destiny journey now? I see grace coming upon somebody today to help you to discover, to shift you supernaturally to where you are supposed to be in the journey of destiny in the name of Jesus Christ. I observe something from the book of John, from the account of John. Account of John, gospel for Jesus, was able to capture how Jesus was conscious of not just doing the will of him that sent him, but also finishing his cost. In John chapter 4 verse 34, Jesus was begged by his disciples to eat food. He was one that told them, I'm hungry, go and buy food. When they bought the food and wanted him to eat, he, he, he has a work to do. He was ministering to people. He said to them, please, I have a food to eat, which you don't know about. And they were like, what kind of food? Has anybody brought him food? He now said to them, my food is to do the will of him that sent me. And to what? To finish, to finish. I'm not just doing it. I am striving to finish. I want to finish in my lifetime. In John 9, 4, he said, he said, I must do the work of him that sent me. I must do the work of him that sent me while it is day. Because night comes. When night of death, night of old age, you will notice that you, can, you, you want to do something, but your age cannot allow you to do it again. Yes, that was what happened to Joshua when God said to him in Joshua chapter 13, you are old, verse 1. God came and said, you are old, but the land I want you to conquer, none of them has, has been conquered. May it not be so unto you in the name of Jesus Christ. In John 17 verse 4, as he was praying the last prayer before the cross, he said, I have 
brought you glory on the earth. I have glorified you on the earth by finishing the work which you gave it me to do. That is fulfillment of divine destiny. Jesus is the example of a man who lived and in his lifetime he fulfilled it. Before he breathed his last in John 19 verse 30, the Bible said, and Jesus, when he has tasted the vinegar they gave to him, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. It is finished. So you can see that the gospel of John, it was only the gospel of John that captured this. It is finished. I mean, he was able to capture that Jesus was not just conscious of doing the will of the Father, but finishing it before he breathed his last. I pray for somebody that you will finish your assignment, your divine assignment, before you give up the ghost in the name of Jesus Christ. Paul also gave us a, 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 an example of somebody who started, even though he started late, he didn't start on time, but he pressed. In Philippians 2, uh, 3 verse 12, he said, I press, I press. From verse 12 to 14, he said that I have not already at He was still pressing. Either we are already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am what? Apprehended in Christ Jesus. There is a reason why I was apprehended in Christ Jesus. And he said, I want to apprehend it. Next verse. He said, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. I am not getting there yet. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, everything, both successes and failures, all the mistakes. You know, some of us, you cannot forgive yourself for the mistake you made. But Paul said, everything that is behind, the successes, failures, I forget them. And I'm reaching forth unto those things which are before. There are things that are still before. I want to make sure that I press on. Next verse. Can we read it together? Verse 14. We want to go. I press towards the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ. This is to show you that it is not easy for him. He was pressing in order to get into that which God has apprehended him in Christ Jesus and finish it. And when he finished, he was still alive in prison, Roman prison, 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 7. He said, I have fought the good fight. Please note that fulfilling divine destiny is a fight. Even though it's a good fight, but a fight is a fight. Please, can we read it together? One to go. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. This is profound. I wish that we can come to the end of our life and we'll be able to say, I have fought a good fight. This is serious. I want you to look at it. I have fought a good fight. What are you fighting? You are fighting against principalities. You are fighting against powers. Some of them say you are not going to rise in this village. Some of them say you are, going, you are not going to rise in this city. Some of them say you are not going to move on to fulfill the purpose. You, fight, you fought them. Some of us, you know, it, sometimes when you attend night meeting, you get ready to fight sleep. Sleep is one of the things he fought. I have fought good fight. He fought hunger during fasting. Are you getting what I'm talking about? There are many things that want to stop him from being at the center of the will of God for his life. He fought them. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. Now, the word course has to do with a route, a direction that a road takes. I have finished my course. That is to say, I have run my race alongside my track. I have reached the end of my course. Now, listen, when we are talking about fulfilling divine destiny, you need to understand that there is a particular course marked for you. Your own course, your own track is different from my own. When you leave your own and come to my own, you have missed it. Paul said, I have what? Finish my course. I don't know about others. I don't know whether they are finished, but the course that my, the, the, the Lord showed me, I have been on it. I have suffered. I have fought, but I have finished. And I didn't finish carelessly. I have kept the faith. 
this is very important because some people in their destiny journey they will compromise i was talking with one of us recently i said there is a price for righteousness when you want to live a righteous life you have to be ready to suffer jesus said blessed are you when men persecute you for righteousness sake are you getting that so there is this persecution there is this suffering that you must have to pass through paul said instead of compromising the faith i kept it i was talking with a brother recently who was about to go for traditional i mean this traditional marriage of 18 just uh, last week and we are discussing about the issue of um the list that the people will give you they have given him list and in that list there are alcohol in the list and he was asking me what is he going to do now what they told the man the in-law father in-law to be is that we have a faith and in our faith we don't drink alcohol and we don't give people and the man said there's no problem just get the money so that we will use it to buy hide it somewhere when you people finish and go then the woman now will now come and take their portion now i was now asking i said brother when you are going to a native doctor or maybe if you say i won't go to a native doctor but you now come somewhere i say please go for me you give the person money to go for you what is the difference between the two eh you are not going so when they ask how many of you have gone to native doctors here you say hmm, i have not gone to any native doctor but you are giving people money to go on your behalf are you not the same now there is also a compromise there is also a hypocrisy there because before the brethren that will come that day they will say this brother kept the faith are you getting me he did what he kept the faith what is our faith believers we don't take alcohol and we don't give people alcohol and we didn't see alcohol in his traditional marriage he kept it but they didn't know that behind he has given money are you getting it i said there is some level of hypocrisy there paul said i have fought the good fight i have finished the course and i have what i have kept the faith in my place of work i have kept the faith i don't tell lies many believers they tell lies in their place of work just not to be given query or to be surcharged maybe for late coming i have kept the faith this is a a, a journey of you know destiny that must be fulfilled in the path of righteousness thou leadest me in the path of righteousness the lord is my shepherd i shall not want he makes me lie down in green pastures he lead me beside the still waters please get me some because you need to you need to pick take note of the fact that the psalmist says you are leading me where in the path of righteousness not path of sin if you are going to fulfill your destiny you are going to move with the lord in which path in the path not in the path of telling lies lusting keeping a boyfriend a girlfriend no it must be in the parts of what please that part is this singular or plural is plural in the parts because at every junction of your life at any place where you are there is a path of righteousness so it's not just one path we are to take and you have to stand for god stand for righteousness in the divine destiny fulfillment journey why do we need to fulfill divine destiny there are seven reasons number one fulfilling divine destiny is the essence of living that is the reason why you are alive you are created for a purpose so if you are doing so many things without discovering the major reason the ultimate goal why you were born and born again you are missing it listen when you want to know what divine destiny is you read your bible what they recorded about jesus was not where he was watching clothes was not where he was bombing the power was not where he was cooking food or eating food all those kind of things the moment jesus began to preach the bible said from that time he began to preach that was when the the, the, the spirit because the bible says that no prophecy of the scripture is of private interpretation he said but these holy men they spoke as they were moved 
by the Holy Ghost. So when you see the author of Matthew, Mark, Luke, you can get that in 2 Peter 1 verse, it is the last verse. You know, they began to write from the point the Holy Ghost moved them. Are you, are you following me? The record they gave about Jesus was not where it was being capitulation. That one is okay, God kept it. But what God was able to capture was the journey. When the, the, the man of himself spoke in John, I mean Luke 19, 30, he said, For the Son of Man came, that is the purpose he came, to seek and to save that which is lost. That was what the Holy Ghost moved the authors of the scripture to begin to write. If the Bible is to be written now again, because God is writing it, I hope He will write something concerning you, sister. Something concerning you, brother. I see some of us that are called to do great things for God, but distractions, so many things about ordinary life will not allow you to focus and keep your eyes on the main reason why you are called, why you were born and born again to be able to fulfill it. So the essence of life is to fulfill the purpose of life. Your life has no meaning before God. You may think that it has meaning before men, but not before God. If you are not living to fulfill your divine ordained destiny, the reason why you were born and born again. Number two, fulfilling divine destiny is the only way to define a successful life. Listen, success is not defined by what somebody has or what somebody is doing or what somebody has done. No. When you say that somebody is successful, you are the one that is talking. For God to call you a successful person, you must be in line with his agenda for your life. What kind of success will be called successful in 90 years or 100 years and you will be in hell to suffer forever? The Bible says that the fire is burning with, I mean the lake is burning with both fire and brimstone. I was challenging some people recently. That's Revelation chapter 21 verse um, 8. I said, have you known how brimstone burn? You know how fire is burning. But have you known, have you seen how brimstone is burning? The lake the lake is burning with what? Two things. Please note that the lake is not burning with one thing. The lake is burning with what? Fire. You know fire. Do you know how brimstone burns? We need to be careful because, you know, when we talk about eternal damnation in hell, sometimes it passes us like this. We become careless. We still tell lies. Look at it. Say all liars. All liars. Warmongers. Fornicators. All sort of, all sort of sexual immorality that people are living in. They will end up in the lake. Now, I want you to note that it is not a success that a man has five cars, has you know, seven buildings, and you have money everywhere. And at the end of the day, your soul will be lost. He said, what shall it profit a man that he should gain the whole world, Mark 8, 36, and lose his soul? Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, 19, he said, if it is only in this life that we have hope, we are of all men. Most what? Miserable. So number three, God has specifically prepared you to fulfill that purpose in your lifetime. Ma, you may be 50 years old or 50 something, but you need to note that if you have not discovered the reason why you are born, 50 years of your life is counted as nothing before God. If you are not at that center, this is a, a chance God is giving us. Many of us is going to shift you back in this season. You know, as we are praying and fasting, the Holy Ghost will be encountering us within the week if you are going to follow the program that he gave us. I want you to note that the, uh, the assignment that God has given to you is specific and nobody is going to fulfill it in your lifetime if you don't. What God will do is that if you fail in your lifetime, he will have to wait because God is not limited by time. He will have to wait and then he will create another person and give him the same assignment and empower him to do the same thing. The peculiar environment where you, you physically grow up, the spiritual atmosphere where you are growing up spiritually, the human vessels that God has appointed for your growth, diversified experiences of your life at various stages, all of them we are arranged, organized by God to prepare you for the divine destiny that he has specifically marked out for you. Your peculiar talents, spiritual and ministerial gifts are all equipment and preparations that God has made
to be able to enable you to fulfill that which he has called you to do. That is number three. Number four reason. Fulfilling divine destiny is the only way to satisfy the heart of God and glorify him on the earth. John 17, 4, Jesus said, I have glorified you on the earth. By what? By finishing the work that you gave me to do. Stop singing songs of praise and glory when your life is not in alignment with divine purpose. The one way to glorify God, look, I, I like this version, NIV. I, please, can we read NIV, John 17, 4? Thank you, media. One, two, go. I have brought you glory on earth. By what? By completing the work you gave me to do. Excuse me, brother, not by doing. You may have started doing, but you didn't complete. By completing. One way that God is glorified over your life is that you will come to the end of your life and you say, I have finished. I have finished. I have kept the faith. I have completed the assignment. Jesus said, it is finished. And he gave up the ghost. I pray that for some of us and for all of us that this will be your own testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Number five reason. Fulfilling divine destiny is what will satisfy Satisfy your own heart in time and secure great reward for you in eternity. See, fulfillment of life eh, is when you are in that which God has called you to do, called you to be. If you are still, you know, outside his call, outside his location, outside what he has he marked for you, you will notice something. You know, sinners... They don't like hearing the gospel because they know that when they hear the gospel, the gospel can change them. So that's why most of them, they run away. Now, some of us, as we are talking now, as we are talking now, this kind of message, the moment it comes, something in you will become unrest because you know that you are not where you are supposed to be. Before you will gather yourself and put this message away after some days and some weeks and continue you know, the kind of life you are living, you, it will take you some energy because something will be breaking your heart. Excuse me, you are supposed to be a full-time minister. You are supposed to be a missionary. What are you doing in the market at Alberta? Excuse me, you are supposed to be serving God as a, a businessman. What are you doing, in, I mean, in the civil service job? Are you getting that? This kind of message, when it comes, it can prick you. It can put you on, at unrest. But sometimes, after a while, you will put it away. You will never be at peace. The Bible says there is no peace for the wicked. It, it, the wicked there is not necessarily somebody who is doing a wicked thing, but somebody who is out of alignment with God's purpose and program for, program for his life. So for you to be satisfied in time, are you following me? I was telling somebody just last week, I said, there was a time I was lecturing and at the same time doing the work of God. And I seemed to be doing both of them together. But I, I said to him that in those days, I don't feel fulfilled anytime I'm going to Soka for lecture. I, I, any, I, I just feel that I'm doing something I'm not supposed to do. But since God has not asked me to resign, uh, let me just be doing it because God has just kept me there. Maybe to keep learning what he wants me to learn. But the moment I now know that all I do is to read Bible, understand it, pray, teach the word of God, I mean, I say I am at home. This is what I am called. You see, somebody may say, why did he resign? He's supposed to be a professor by now. You don't know what you're talking about. I am the most happy person on earth. I am happy because I am satisfied doing what God has called me to do. Some of you are looking for money. That's why the fear to resign, the fear to answer the call will not allow you. And because something is telling you that you will lose money. But who told you that God does not take care of his servants? I'm not saying that everybody should be called into full time. That's not true. That's not true. But you need to note that if you are not doing what he has called you to do, you may not have satisfaction. What about reward in the eternity? Have you thought about it? That whatever you do that is outside his you know, will and purpose for your life will not have reward. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 3, if you read from verse 12 down, he said that our works will be tested with fire. How will it be tested with fire? If you read Revelation chapter, um, I think chapter 19 or so, where the, the uh, apostle was describing Jesus, he said his eyes is, is, is full of fire. That is, his eyes are flames of fire. So you know how that thing will be done? Eh? How your work will be tested with fire? By the time 
there, there is fire coming out of the eyes of the master. So by the time your work is passing through, eh, and the master is looking at it, he's spending it, the fire from his eyes will be burning everything that you did that is not in line with his will. Just by him looking at your work alone. That, you see, you need to understand that the word of God is settled forever in heaven. Eh? He said his eyes are flames of fire. And the apostle said that our works will be tested with fire. Which fire? The fire in his eyes. When he comes to inspect what you have done, I notice that you have done so many things, but none of them is in line with your agenda. Which reward are you going to have? The Bible says he's going to reward us according to his what? According to our works. According to our works. So when all the works has finished burning, which one will remain for your reward? Let me ask your neighbor because I'm not sure you are hearing me. Say, neighbor, when all the works you, are, you thought you have done has been burnt with fire from his eyes, which one will you be rewarded for? Eh? That is why you must ensure that what you are doing now is in line with his divine purpose and agenda and program for your life. Number six, fulfilling divine destiny will secure a position for you in God's eternal dynasty. In God's eternal line of rulership. You know, when you read the book of Revelation carefully, chapter 2 and 3, you see where the apostle was mentioning the rewards that will be for those saints that did well and all of that. Listen, when you talk about people like Abraham, people like Isaac, people like Jacob, all these people that the, 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 the word of God mentioned for us, what do you think? that made their name to enter God's book. How are we studying them? And we are not studying their classmates. They have a space now in God's program. Why are we studying Paul? Doesn't Paul have fellow lawyers that he, he graduated from law school with? Where, what is their name? Who knows their name? That's why I used to ask people, why is it that the name of Job's wife was not captured in the Bible? Job's wife. We know the name of Abraham's wife. The name of uh, Isaac's wife. The name of... Uh, where is, who knows the name of Job's wife? Job has a lot of books. Who knows why her name was not captured? In Luke 9, the last five chapters, I think from 57 to 62, there are three men that we are not ready to follow Jesus. This one said, I will follow you, but let me uh, go and say bye-bye to my people. And all of that. What I call them is three unnamed men. We know men that were named in the, in the Bible. Listen, let me ask your neighbor. You see, when we are talking about the book of life, God has a book. And the people, people, people whose name enters his book are people who have something to do with his purpose. Are you getting what I'm talking about? They, they are the people that their name enters. It's not, people, it's not everybody. It's not everybody. So I don't know if another, another book will be written, whether your name will enter God's book of dynasty, book of the kingdom. So if you are fulfilling God's purpose, you can be sure that your name will enter that book. Then another reason, which is the last one, number seven, why we must strive to fulfill divine destiny in our lifetime is so that we can become a positive reference for others. Have we not mentioned Jesus? Mentioned um, Paul? Now, do we need to mention people that did not finish? Eh? Joshua was one of them. Not this Joshua. You will finish in Jesus' name. But in Hebrew 3, I think, he said, if Joshua has given them rest, he wouldn't have spoken about another rest. Because he came to a point, he was distracted by achievement, he relaxed. Eh? And God said, you are old, you can't do it again. What I called you to do from Joshua chapter 1, you can't do it again. Divide the unconquered land. And the people started struggling because of the deficiency of Joshua. I pray that you will not become a negative reference when they want to talk about those who did not fulfill their divine destiny. They say, don't you know her now? It's Sister Chinyan. He's one of them. Eh? It's not going to be your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. You will be a positive reference. Now, we now know that it is possible to fulfill divine destiny because we have seen somebody that entered the race late, Paul, and he finished. And he said, I finished. So, can your own finishing become an encouragement to generation after you? Or will people read about you and they will say this one did not finish? People like John Wesley, eh? he was faced with a lot of fight. I think he made a mistake in the wife that he married. But despite all the fight from that marriage, that man remained focused. And the Bible 
I mean, the, his the told us that he finished and finished well. What about uh, Charles Finney? Them most of these contemporary saints that are waiting for us, they face the same circumstances we are facing. But they became positive uh, references. In the Bible, we have negative references. If you finish your, your, your divine uh, purpose, your assignment, you will become a positive reference for those who are coming after you. I want to finish. I don't know about you. Do you want to finish? I want to fulfill God's divine destiny for my life. I don't know about you. If you are interested in fulfilling divine destiny for your life, can you bow your head and pray in the Holy Ghost in the next one minute? Just say, Father, I need your grace. I need your help. Help me. I want to finish. Please, can you pray? Can you pray? Can you pray? Can you say, Lord, I surrender to you. Take over. Take over. Take over. Take over. Will you say to him, Lord, I don't know how far I am in destiny yet but i want to finish i want to finish i need your grace shift me to where i am supposed to be in destiny journey i am distracted by home shores i'm distracted by business activities i'm distracted by things of this world that has no eternal hope and and, and value help me to be focused on fulfilling divine purpose thank you father in the name of jesus Amen. get me acts of the apostle chapter 8, 18 from verse 24 to 28 we want to read the story a very short story of apollos and be able to glimpse from that story 10 keys to fulfilling divine destiny and a certain jew named apollos born at alexandria an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures came to ephesus move on this man was instructed in the word of the lord and being fervent in the spirit he spoke and taught diligently the things of the lord knowing only the baptism of john move on and he began to speak boldly in the synagogue whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them and expounded unto him the word of the Lord more perfectly. And when he was disposed to pass to Achaia, the brethren wrote exhorting the disciples to receive him, who when he was come helped them much which had believed through grace. And finally, for he mightly convinced the Jews and that publicly showing by the scriptures that Jesus was the Christ. Ten keys that will enable everyone who is interested in fulfilling your divine destiny to be able to do so. From the story, this short story, about four or five verses about Apollos. Now, the first thing or the first key is diligent preparation towards your divine destiny. Just get us the first verse. Verse 24. He said, a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria. Please, note where he was born. Alexandra is a city in Egypt, in Africa. This Jew, possibly his parents went to Africa. And that was where they gave birth to him. Now, but you see, where you were born, how you were born, who born you, is not the matter. The matter is, will you, now you are born, be able to say, yes, I am now here. What is the assignment? You know, some of you are blaming your parents. I don't know why my parents did not brought me up well. They, see, stop giving excuses. It is time to take responsibility of your life. Leave people alone and face what is facing you, your own destiny. He was born in Egypt. And, but the Bible says he was an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures came to Ephesus. Two things that showed us that Apollos took time to prepare himself towards fulfilling his divine destiny. Number one, he was an eloquent man. Now, when you hear the word eloquent, you will think that eloquent is a natural talent. No. Check the meaning of eloquence in dictionary. Eloquence means somebody who is fluent or persuasive in speaking and writing. It is to clearly express or indicate something. Now, Apollos came to realize, 
you know, this is just how the story started. He didn't tell us where he went to primary school, where he went to secondary school. Are you getting what I'm talking about? There's a way the Bible is. That portion that your life fits in, in eternal purpose of God, is the portion they will cut and fix. Now, so forget about his secondary school, whether he went to university or not. The point now is this. Apollos become an eloquent man because he has first discovered, and of course, maybe by next Sunday, I will begin to share with us, I will, I will share with us steps, practical steps towards fulfilling your divine destiny, of which number one is that you have to diligently seek God to discover it. He is the one that manufactures, he is the designer, and he is the one that will tell you the purpose of this life that I have brought. But, you know, at this point of Apollo's life, he has passed that stage. He has already discovered that I am born to be a preacher. I am born to be a, a, a man of God, a missionary. So, he, he, having discovered that, he now knew that one of the things that he needed is the ability to preach well. You know, when I, I, if you study the meaning of eloquence more in some dictionary, there's one that said, ability to speak a language without pausing. Now, I'm going to preach in Hebrew. I'm going to preach in English. I want to also preach in French. Apollos took time to learn the languages that he need. Remember, he was born in Africa. But he needed to learn how to speak Hebrew language fluently, eloquent. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Born in Alexandria. But he has a deficiency of Hebrew language. But he took time to learn it. We call it diligent preparation. You now know what God has called you to do. You are preparing yourself diligently towards that. Then the second aspect is mighty in the scriptures. Can we say mighty in the scriptures? This particular is it phrase. Keep me thinking for several hours and days now. I've been thinking about it since I met it. My, what does it mean to be mighty in scripture? Do you know that apart from being a preacher, that for everyone that will fulfill divine destiny, you must be mighty in scripture. Are you aware of that? God spoke to Joshua in Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. He said, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you will observe to do according to all that was written in it. He said, for then, that is when you, you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. That is to say, if you, don't, if you, if you want to succeed in the destiny journey, you cannot play with the scriptures. No wonder Jesus, at the age of 12, when he traveled with his parents to Jerusalem, normal traveling, the Bible said, Luke chapter 2 from verse 42 to 52, when the parents were going back, he stayed back in Jerusalem. When he stayed back in Jerusalem, he was now asking them questions, listening to them, and was learning. It came to pass. They were looking for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of doctors, doing what? He was hearing them. And he was what? Ask, he wanted to learn. He is studying the scriptures. He's learning. Listen, I don't know how many of you that are interested in fulfilling God's purpose for your life. Apollos was mighty in the scriptures. Ezra 7 verse 10. And Ezra has prepared his heart to seek the law of, the, of his God. To do it and to teach it. He has prepared. See, I asked one of us a question recently. Just recently. I said, how many scriptures can you quote from your head? He said one. And he quoted that one. I shouted. I said, for all these years you are born again. The only scripture in your head is one. Can you say that such a brother is mighty in the scripture? What do you say he is? Eh? What is the opposite of mighty? <laughs> you know, this, this is not a laughing matter. I want you to note, because this is where our deficiency comes from. The devil is called the deceiver of the whole world. He even came to deceive Jesus with scriptures. Am I correct? How do you think he will escape his deception? How do you think he will, es he will escape his distraction? Eh? You are five years in the Lord and you have not read the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation. What are you doing with your time? How do you manage your time? God spoke to me years ago. I was telling some people recently, I said, I wish that I took what God told me. more. I took it serious then, but I wish I took it more serious than I, I took it then. Because he was telling me that a time is coming when you will not have this kind of time you, you are having now. 
use this time to read and study the scriptures. I wanted to do business, to do lesson, to make money. He said, no. Use your time to study the word at every stage in my life. He kept on keeping, keep if I tell you the story, you know, many of you, the day you will see yourself fall into sin, you yourself, after all your speaking in tongues, that, that's when you notice that it is the poverty of the scripture that has caused you this. Do you know that most times, the, the, the main reason, because when the devil came to tempt Jesus, he wanted him to fall into temptation. But why and how did he overcome? It is written. It is written. Little children, I have written to you because you are strong. I have written to you because you are strong. And the word of God abided in you. And you have overcome the wicked one. First John 2.14 I have written to you, young men, look at it, the second part of it. I have written to you, young men, because you are strong and the word of God abided in you. And you have what? Over Apollos was mighty in scriptures. Let me ask your neighbor, are you mighty in scriptures? Talk to me. Oh my God. Many of us, I don't know what to say. Please, can you demand answer from your neighbor? Don't just do it as a religious activity. Say, neighbor, please, I need an answer. Are you mighty? Are you mighty in scriptures like Apollos? How many scriptures can you quote correctly? How many are in you? How many is abiding in you? How many have you? He was mighty in the scriptures. Listen carefully. This took discipline. This took diligence. This young man, he will pick up Bible to read and sleep will come. He will jump up and say, it can happen. This is the time to read Bible. I will not sleep at, at this time. You think when Apollos was reading the scripture to become mighty in scripture, that sleep does not come to his eyes? You think that he is not doing some other thing that you are doing? Apollos determined to be mighty in scripture. He took time. He was disciplined. He was preparing for a destiny so that his name we enter God's agenda. Today we are preaching using Apollos because Apollos did something in line with divine destiny. Sister, brother, when did you go for personal set apart last and spend time reading the Bible? I was in one la last weekend. I was a day waiting for them to come for boot camp. And when I was praying, I said, God, what do you have for the boot camp? I didn't get anything. I said, make I read the one that I know. I spent time. I consumed 10 chapters in Jeremiah. Went to Second Peter, read again, and carried some put in my, in my head. Listen, when you see a man of God preaching and quoting scriptures, it, it was not anointing that carried it. You know, some of you are saying it's an anointing. Which anointing? You need to take time. You need to discipline yourself. There is a vigil to read Bible. There is a video to meditate, study by keep watch to read your Bible. How how of how many of the Bible that you that you know? In Colossians 3:16, he said, Let the ways of Christ dwell in you richly, not poorly. Believers, wake up. Our victory, our prosperity in this end time, in these last days, is going to be depending on how mighty you are in the scripture. Apollos was able to fulfill, look at it, let the words of Christ dwell in you. How? How? Many of you want to be rich with money. You don't know that when you are rich with the word, money follows the word. You don't know that. Number two key. I don't know whether you have gotten number one. We don't have en enough time to start doing all the explanation, but the point, the point is that Apollos took time. That deficiency was not in his life. Many of us, you are 40 years, you are 40 something. The reason why you are not yet stable as a Christian, you can't do what a Christian can do, is your poverty in the knowledge of the Bible. You, you are, and you know, the devil likes it. Whenever you want to read the Bible, you will bring sleep. Because he wants to keep you perpetually poor in the scripture. Because he knows that if you rise, for some of you mothers, he is giving you excuses. He's telling you that you have many things now. You have children to take care of. You have food to cook. Please don't take such excuses again from the flesh and from the devil. Bend down. Discipline yourself. Read the Bible. Young people that are in the house, stop going from place to place looking for money, petty money, hunting for how much. This is the time you are supposed to sit down, lock yourself, read your Bible, and know the word. When you know the word and you do the word, you will become equipped. 
the Bible says thoroughly equipped. All scriptures is given by God's inspiration. And it's profitable for what? For teaching, for correction, for a book, and for training in righteousness. That the man of God, please get me, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto every good. Do I tell you what the Bible and the knowledge of it and the doing of it does in a man's life? Ministers, pastors, you see, many of you want to go high, you want to go international. The scripture you have cannot take you outside your state. I mean, Apollos was mighty in the scriptures. That's how we move. That's how we move in the journey of destiny, in the route, in the course of your race. Paul said, I have finished the course. Even in the Roman prison, when they have you know, decreed, decreed the date of his death, he was still writing to Timothy, say, when you are coming, bring the parchment, bring the books. He still wants to read the Bible more, even as he has saying, I have finished. What is this he reading for? He wants to do the extra time he, that God gave to him, for extra reward. I pray that God will help us to wake up. Let me tell you, remember, wake up in the scriptures. Wake up. Stop giving the excuses. I don't have, who have time? Who have time? You say you are doing business. Who have time? Plan yourself and prepare yourself because what you don't have, you don't have. When it is time to give it out, it will be very terrible. Number two key from the life of Apollos. Apollos submitted to discipleship. The Bible says this man, not another man, this man was instructed in the way of the Lord. He was what? He was trained. He was discipled. Before Apollos came to Ephesus, there is a discipleship level that he submitted his life to. He was instructed in the way of the Lord. Listen carefully. In Psalm 103 verse 7, he said, He maketh his way known to Moses and his art to the children of Israel. His ways known to Moses and his art to the children of Israel. Look, let's read it together. I want to go. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto... They are not the same. The ways of the Lord in Psalm 25 verse 9 is given to some particular kind of people. He said, the meek will you guide in judgment. The meek will you show your way. Now, I want to note something. You know, for Apollos, he has to submit to a man to instruct him in the way of the Lord. To disciple him in the way of the Lord. He yielded his life, even though he's mighty in the scripture. Are you getting me at all? You can pick the scripture, read and study and learn the scriptures. But that is not enough. You need to be instructed in the way of the Lord. You need to be discipled. The second key from the life of Apollos that enabled him, energized him to be able to fulfill the purpose of God for his life was his submission, his yieldedness to the necessary discipleship that prepared and equipped him for that journey. The Bible says, this man was instructed in the way of the Lord. I don't know whether you have yielded yourself, you have submitted yourself to the discipleship level and opportunity that God has given us in this house, or you are still doing truancy. What Judas was doing, even though he was among, among the twelve, his leg was inside, his leg was outside. This Sunday he will come, this next Sunday he will go. He will ask him, Judas, where are you last Sunday? When other disciples gather, he will give an excuse. He will say, I went to buy food, I went to do something, I went to do... Judas kept until he was cut off. And today, I don't know where he is. I pray that for all of us, it will not just be plain truancy in discipleship. You will submit and yield yourself like Apollos. It's a key. You want to see, you don't know the word of, you may know scripture, but somebody has known the word of God more than you. That's why we submit. In the days and years, they were asking me to submit to a disciple. I say, I don't need a disciple. Holy Ghost is my disciple. I keep saying that until one day Holy Ghost came and said, I heard you telling people that I'm your disciple. For your information, I'm not your disciple. Go and submit to a man. That was when I now began to pray and say, Lord, which man? You saw when my disciple came here. I went to him and said, Sir, be my disciple. I yielded. Some of you, when you want to become a teller, you will go and submit to a teller eh? and become obedient. When you want to be a painter, when you want to be a, a plumber, you will go and submit and you are following. You will never miss his work Monday to Saturday. But when you come to discipleship, you say you are serious. This Sunday you will come. Monday you will not be there. And um, uh, uh, you, you are, When they say disciples boot camp, you will miss it. 
And I, 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 you say you are preparing. No. Apollos was instructed. He was disi properly discipled. This man was instructed in the word of the Lord. Key number three. He was led by the Spirit. Please, I, I want you to note something. Just move to verse, um, verse 24. Look at it again. We are picking lessons from the life of a Christian legend that lived out God's purpose in his lifetime. A young man. I don't know whether he even got married. I don't know whether, you know, other people are pursuing money, entering Yahoo. Look at it. A certain Jew named Apollos, God has Alexander, an eloquent man, mighty in the city of What did he do? He came to Ephesus. How did he know that he should come to Ephesus? Excuse me, Apollos, who told you that you should enter Ephesus? Are there not other cities? That man was led by the Spirit. Do you know that it was at Ephesus that he met his destiny helpers? Men that, I mean, the Bible said they taught him the will of the Lord more He was led by the Spirit. He doesn't do things carelessly. He doesn't take decisions anyhow. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Proverbs chapter 25 to 6. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, do what? Acknowledge him. And he shall what? Direct your path. Psalm 2 verse 8. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. And I will guide you with my eye upon you. Psalm 32 verse 8. I will instruct you. Let's read it together. One to go. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will all go. Do what? Guide you. There are three things there. Instruct is not the same thing as teach. And guide. When I finish instructing you, I will see you that will give you details. Teaching is talking about details. And then I will guide you as you are moving. Apollos was guided to Ephesus. He was not carnal like some of us. We are just willing to come to God. Uh, my uncle is in Lagos. He said, I should come over. Come over where? And you ask God. He said, In all your ways, acknowledge him. He said, he, he promised me a job. He said, I should come. Uh, how is the business? I said, If it's not working, come to Abuja so that we can start doing it here. And you foolishly go to Abuja. And that's how you keep on wasting your time. I want you to know that Apollos did not enter Ephesus carelessly. He was led. If you are going to fulfill the purpose of God for your life, you don't enter places anyhow. There is a divine location that carries your divine allocation. If heaven will give you your destiny helpers, listen, who is a destiny helper? A destiny helper is somebody that God uses to guide you on your journey towards your destiny. Your wife can be a destiny helper, your husband. But some of us, when you choose wrongly, you have, there are friends around I, I, I am very grateful to God. I was telling somebody some time ago, I said, I don't know why God wanted me to read electrical electronics engineering before. Because I was not even practical inclined. I don't like practical electronics. So when I finished, I said, the only thing that is good for me is to go and be teaching the, in the classroom. <laughs> I managed to learn practical electronics, so did my master's project by, by my hand. But it doesn't give me joy to do the practical work. But so I was teaching, teaching, even the teaching self, I was just teaching. Now, but you know, when I was in final year, one of my lecturers, a woman, I don't know how God just connected me to this woman, she's a believer. And through her, I got to know a woman of God that God used to make a very significant impact in my life. Brothers and sisters, do you know that just for that woman of God, is there enough for God to say, go to you and read electrical electronics engineering? Are, are you aware of that? He will guide you along the pathway of your destiny helpers. And Apollos came to Ephesus. Why did he enter Ephesus? Why didn't he, why didn't he go to Rome? Why did he enter Nazareth? He came from Alexandria to Ephesus. He had God while he was praying at Alexandria in the discipleship level where he was being discipled. God said, go to Ephesus. And by the Spirit of God, he entered Ephesus. Some of you entered the Enugu, not by the Spirit, and that's why you are struggling. I pray that God will help everyone that is out of alignment with your divine destiny today. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Key number, number four now. Apollos was fervent in spiritual exercises. Look at it in verse 
25. This man was instructed in the word of the Lord and being what? Being fervent in the spirit. Somebody say, being fervent in the spirit. This is very serious. What does it mean to be fervent? To be burning. If you check the meaning of fervent in both Greek dictionary and uh, normal dictionary, it says to be burning. Apollos was what? Hot! Burning for God. He was not cold. In Revelation chapter 3 verse 15 to 16, God was rebooking the Laodicean short. He said, you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you are cold or hot. I would have at least be happy that you are either. But because you are lukewarm, I will spill you out of my mouth. I know your works, that thou art neither cold or hot. I would, I would, thou we are cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, what did he say you will do? Let me ask your neighbor, are you cold or hot? Or I see some of us, I know what is going on in some of our hearts. Some of you are saying, eh, this, this discipleship, um, this, uh, this thing they are doing, I don't want to be, you know, carry all myself and put, let me just be following them small, small. Eh? Any Sunday I have chance, I will come. I like the way they are preaching there. Excuse me, God said, I'm going to spew out of my mouth. God is, he doesn't have space for people that are lukewarm. You have to be burning for your God. Apollos was able to fulfill God's destiny for his life because he was fervent in the spirit. He was all out. The Bible says, being fervent in the spirit. See, fervency of the spirit has to do with two major spiritual exercises. Fasting and praying. Eh? James chapter 5 verse 16. Confess your thoughts one to another. And pray for one another. He said, the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much. Not every prayer of a righteous man avails much. It must be fervent. What does it mean to be fervent? You are praying with all the energy of your spirit, all the energy of your soul, all the energy of your body. That's how to seek God and get God. Jeremiah 29 verse 13. You shall seek me and find me only on one condition. When you have sought for me with all your heart, he was not cold. Apollos was not lukewarm. Apollos was what? Fervent in the spirit. I decree and declare that whatever that is fighting your fervency in the spirit goes down now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Key number five. Apollos was passionate and diligent in executing the mandate of his destiny. Can you imagine that? Apollos came to Ephesus. Nobody encouraged him to come to Ephesus. Apollos, move on. Okay, yes. Look at it. Being fervent in the spirit, he spoke and taught diligently the things of the Lord. Who was encouraging him? Some of us, you will be encouraged. They will motivate you. They will even ask you to come and uh, fool the street. They will send text message, uh, reminder. They will call you. They say, I don't have transport for you. They have transport for you for me. Uh, Excuse me. Apollos was not like that. He was not just fervent in spirit. He was totally out. Somebody said totally out. In First Timothy chapter four, verse fifteen, Paul was writing to Timothy. He said, "Give yourself wholly to this thing. Do what? Give yourself wholly to this thing. Don't resign yourself. Meditate upon this thing. Give yourself wholly to them. That your profiting will, will do what." We appear to all. The Bible says he diligently taught the things of God. Nobody was encouraging him. That's the point. He diligently taught the things of God. The word diligent is a, is a, a point there. Proverbs 22, verse 29, what did he say? He said, See a man that is diligent in his business. What will happen to him? What will happen to him? He will stand before kings, he will not stand before me men. Apollos was diligent. Apollos was passionate. Apollos was all out in executing the mandate of his divine destiny. Some of us, you are, you are lazy. You know, yesterday, when we finished finish the, uh, what do you call it? Disciples uh, boot camp. I told my wife, I said, I am going to night vigil, personal night vigil this night. I want to keep awake over the night because I want to stay with God. 
I want to get from God what we have for his people. I want to pray. So in the morning when I called her, I said, are you ready for church? She said, um, how was the... Yeah, I said I was able to... Because, you know, if you know how we spent the night at boot camp, you know I should be weak. But I said, I thought I was able to pray for four hours. At least I got four hours prayer out of the night. And then we are pressing. The moment I am back from church, I'm sitting down again. I say, God, what do you have for your people? We call it diligence. Your mind, your soul, your heart is in that which you know God has called you to do. There are some of you here looking at me. God has called you to be a kingdom financier. But you are too lazy for that assignment. You are just too lazy. You cannot do a, a, a serious business. I mean, you cannot position yourself to be able to win a contract that will enable you to be able to get the sometimes for the assignments. I pray. Even those of you that are students, you are not reading your book very well, well. You are not, I don't know. You need to know that heaven is watching you to see how you are behaving and lack of sin in anybody's life. Here, go away now in the name of Jesus Christ. Key number six, strength and courage to start. Somebody says, start. Look at next verse, verse 26. And he began. That's the point there. Eh? Apollos did what? Began to preach boldly in the synagogue. Courage is not absence of fear. Courage is acting in the present, acting boldly, even when there are things that are very, very afraid. And you get what I'm talking about. And the Lord said, hold international ministers discipleship conference. And he went to the hall. How much is the hall? They said the hall is 800,000 or 850. Yes, 850,000. Eh? For the three days. Ah, if we take courage. That was what we paid last year for a home. Yes. You know, it's ridiculous in the house. You know, I don't know how to describe this point, but maybe the next time we are going to have more time on the steps. That's where we are going to learn more practical steps in this matter. Because what we need to change our mindset, change our heart, to be able to fit into the, 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 how big what we want to accomplish with us are. Eh? Amen. Apollos was courageous enough not to procrastinate. He started. He entered Ephesus. He began. Are you getting what I'm saying now? He entered Ephesus. He entered the synagogue. He began to preach. He was preaching boldly in the temple. Some of us, God has given you an assignment, but you are saying, What I will do? Go away and cry next week. Next week. Next two weeks. He began. Somebody said, I will begin. I will not procrastinate again. He was strong enough to begin. Now, key number seven, we have touched it, but I need to touch on the aspect of focus. Apollos was wholly dedicated and focused towards his divine destiny. So, the number, key seven, key number seven said, wholly dedicated and focused towards your divine destiny. Apollos was full time, he was not doing any other thing. He was in that business that God has called him. You know that this is what God has called me for. He gave it his full attention. He was not in Ephesus to make money. There are business going on in Ephesus. I hope you know that. I hope you know that. Apollos did not enter Ephesus market. He entered the synagogue. He came here with a purpose. He gave himself fully. He refused to be distracted. Listen, Apollos was a young man, not married. And young five years in Ephesus. He was not distracted by five years. You see, some of you are distracted in internet. You move from Facebook, you are just looking at pictures of ladies. You just keep looking. Excuse me, time is going. This is a destiny time. Brother, stop that! You know, for some of us, the way you handle social media and several things that we do in, you know, with our time is already a point that, that you are behind the scene. I mean, he was not distracted. What does he need to be distracted? To so carry the time you are supposed to use to put in that which God has called you to do and be doing another thing. Eh? You are watching a video. And that video you are watching is not adding anything to your divine destiny. You are already behind the scene. You need to avoid distraction at all costs. And keep your eyes on that which God has called you to do. That's a lesson from Apollos. Key number eight. He is humbly submitted. Apollos humbly submitted for further discipleship and help. Listen carefully. 
Please get me where they submitted to um, Aquila head. And when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they did what? They took him unto them and expounded unto him the word of God. This is very serious. You know, when you when you begin to understand the Bible, you will notice that just a sentence can mean a lot. Do you know what is happening here? Apollos was mighty in scriptures. Apollos has begun to preach. He's a preacher, he's a minister. Are you getting what I'm talking about? And he's not an ordinary, he's a full-time minister. There are some of us here that are ministers, full-time ministers. Apollos is mighty in the scriptures. He was probably disciple before he came. But when these other preachers heard what he was preaching, they said, Apollos, follow me. I want to disciple you for that. There is deficiency in your discipleship. You went to Bible college, Bible training, but that Bible school has some deficiency that you didn't add to your life. I want to add it to your life so that you will be Apollos submitted himself. Talk to several Pentecostal pastors today and ask them to come and be disciple. So then we say, uh, we are also doing discipleship in this church. Eh? Every Tuesday, they will convert Bible study to discipleship. Thinking that, you know, when you don't understand something, you won't, you won't, you won't be able to do it. Because if you are not disciple, disciple by somebody, how will you disciple somebody? That's the question. Apollos have to yield to Priscilla and Aquila. This Priscilla and Aquila were met by Paul in verse 1 and 2 when Paul entered Corinth. Eh? Uh, is it uh, correct? Yes. When he entered Corinth, he met them as tent makers and he discipled them. And both of them became full time missionaries. Sometime ago, Paul was writing a thing to the Romans. He said that the whole churches of the Gentiles are owing greeting and thanksgiving to Priscilla and Aquila because they labored extensively. You know, we are here about Paul only. There are other people that in the family will now know that they also labored abundantly. Priscilla and Aquila, husband, I don't know whether they have children. I don't know, but they were not distracted by children. Now, they are the one that called Apollos and sat a man of God down. And the man of God was humble. The point is humility. Are you getting me at all? Many ministers that are both preaching mighty in scriptures, instructed in the word of the Lord, they will not submit even when they notice that I am deficient in power, I'm deficient in the, in the world, they will not submit. Apollo submitted and yielded to Priscilla and Aquila, and his life become better. May you learn this spirit of humility because in your journey, some of you that are businessmen, you need to submit to other businessmen that are higher than you. Attend business conferences, read, study, go for training in that which you are in. Yield yourself for further training so that you'll be able to have some level of excellency and fulfill that which God has called you to do. Key number what now? Number nine. Apollos also had a value for the village for the brethren. Eh? Proper value for the brethren and the church. That's verse 27 now. Eh? And when he was disposed to pass into Achaia, the brethren wrote. Now, Priscilla and Aquila, they were leaders in the church that Paul founded in Ephesus. Are you following me? So, they were, when they finished ministering to Apollos, they now told Apollos, you just entered Ephesus. There are brethren that are already born again that are following this same way. Apollos yielded and joined the fellowship of the brethren. He became so much a member of that discipleship group, that brethren, that when he wanted to, led again by the spirit to travel to Achaia, that's current. The brethren, the disciples, they wrote a recommendation letter and gave to a a Apollos and said, when you get to Corinth, give this letter to the brethren in Corinth. Are you getting that now? So he, he didn't say, eh, I'm a man of God, you people be doing your fellowship, let me start my own fellowship in Ephesus here. No! He was yielding to the fellowship of the brethren and when the church sent him with a letter, he came under the authority of the church. So he was able to acknowledge the body of Christ. He was able to come and become a fellowship member. Begin, you know some of you here, the moment you are sharing grace, you are flying out. I know some of them here. There are some I have already told, this is not fellowship. 
Nobody knows your name. Nobody can trace where you are living. And you are among disciples. Jesus said in John 13, 35, By this shall all men know you are my disciples. The love you have for one another. How do you make up your mind and say, eh, I don't have any friend. I don't have anybody. You are just on your own. Apollos was not. See, you need association. Right association. You need brethren. Let me tell your neighbor, you need brethren. You need brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. The fellowship will help you, equip you, strengthen you to fulfill your divine destiny. Stop being a lone ranger. Is somebody learning? Because that's what some of us are currently. There's nobody that knows your house. That's, you are just on your own. Even discipleship area meeting we are having in your area, you're not attending. The disciples there, they don't know you. Apollos was, he came under the... That's how brethren began to acknowledge the grace of God upon his life. So when he said, I am led by the Spirit to go to Achaia, they say yes. They prayed for him and gave him a letter of introduction. When he got to the church at Corinth, he presented the letter. And number 10, exploits began. The man of grace. The Bible said he was able to help them. Just move, move to the next verse. Uh, when he was come, he helped them much, which had believed through grace. Apollos helped. That's key number ten. Ap you need to be a man of grace, a man that has learned to maximize the grace of God for diligent labor in God's vineyard. Not just in the area of preaching and teaching, but also in other areas of destiny call that heaven has assigned you. Listen, Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 10, even though I am the least of all the apostles, yet I have labored more than them all, yet not I, but the grace of God. He said, the grace of God is not for you to just say, I have grace. Grace is for labor. Look at it. Eh? By the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace. Listen, the grace of God that was upon Apollos. How do you know a man of grace? Grace is God walking. Grace is God preaching. Some of you are looking at me and saying, hey, he's preaching. No, he's not me preaching. I am crucified with Christ. It is no longer I that preaches. It is Christ that preaches in me. Do you know why you are receiving something and deserving your life? It is not Chido. It is Christ. When you understand grace, Apollos understood grace. It is when you understood grace that you know that it is not you. When God says, preach in that bus, you don't start looking at the people in the bus and say they are timbers and calibers of men. You know that it is not you that is here. It is Christ that lives in you. And so you open your mouth and Jesus will have his way and preach powerfully through you and souls will be brought into the kingdom. Brothers and sisters, as we conclude the message and to pray, I want you to look at these keys and look at your life. Remember the reasons we have shared, seven reasons why you must be diligent in fulfilling the purpose of God for your life. And now we are seeing the keys, learning from the life of a legend that lived for Christ, Apollos. How to position yourself, how to cut a humble heart, how to study, prepare yourself, how to submit to discipleship, how to yield to the fellowship of the brethren, and how to labor diligently. When he finished helping the brethren through grace, in verse 20, uh, 28, the Bible says he also came out and began to convince the Jews mightily. He began to wield his mightiness in the scripture and was proving to them that this Jesus that I'm talking to you about, he is a Christ. Where are you in destiny journey? Are you sure you know what you are called to do? Are you sure you know your assignment? Are you struggling eh, as a pastor, as a, a, a man of God, as an evangelist? Are you struggling? You know, you don't even know this person will come and provoke you. The other thing will come and, you know, and you are just like that. You are not mighty in the scripture. You are not taking, this is a time to pray and say, God, I need help. Can somebody rise up and pray that prayer? Say, God, I need, however you are going to help me today, I need help. I need, I want alignment, a realignment on the journey of destiny. Yes, we are talking about fulfilling divine destiny. Today is part one. Next Sunday, I will be more practical when we start looking at steps, steps to fulfilling divine destiny. I want you to pray yet as God has spoken to us today. Say to God, I am sorry, I have missed it. I want a realignment back. Help me from now. Some of us, you need to cry out and say, God, I don't even know what I'm doing. 
I don't even know whether I am in line. I am too poor in the scripture. I am not taking my discipleship seriously. And my years are gone. And I'm, I, I, I am very far behind. Can there be a shift? Can there be a mercy? Can there be a recovery? Can there be a restoration? Can something be done for me at this old age? Can mothers pray? Can fathers pray? Can youth pray? Those of us whiling away our time. Those of us who are, who are just, you know, you, you don't give time to what God has called you to do. Can you pray and say, God, I don't want to face eternity with a sense of regret. I don't want to stand before the judgment seat and Jesus will say, this is what I created you to do. This is what I created you to do. Why is it that you didn't do it? And you are saying, I didn't, I didn't even know. Lord, I didn't even know. Some of us are being deceived by the flesh. Pursuit of money will not allow you to concentrate. Apollos died to money. He was full time. He was fully engaged. Can you rise, raise your voice and cry out for help tonight? La basondo kanda la bashanda. Elika mayando kande elende lebo suka raba baba bakonda lende lebo shanda landa raba sondo kande lende lebo shanda raba kande emahanda la basondo kanda landa raba shanda. Lende le poche le kosi Bayando kanda Landa raba sonto kanda Can you pray? It's remaining three more minutes Before I begin to pray for you But you need to pray Pray in the spirit Pray in the known language Pray and ask God to help you Pray God can still show you mercy That's why he's coming to us That's why the word is coming now It's because God wants to show mercy to somebody All you just need to do is to repent if you are not born again at all, it's time to get born again. It's time to submit and surrender to the Lord. It's time to say, God, I don't want distraction again. I'm called to be a singer, to sing and bring the glory of God down to the body of Christ. Lord, help me to develop myself, to be diligent. Deliver me from distraction, pursuit of money here and there. I want to use my youthful age to sit down and be discipled. La Basanda Kanda, Rika Le Basanda. We have seen the keys in the life of Apollos. Can you pray and say, God, amend my life? Show me the way. Give me grace. La Basanda Kanda Le Basanda, Landara Basanda, Landara Basanda, Landara Basanda, Landara Basanda, Landara Basanda. He was instructed in the word of the Lord. He still submitted as a minister to be guided by another minister humility can you pray for humility a humble heart a humble heart several people are roaming around they know they are supposed to submit but they, they will be out of pride wasting their time tomorrow they will face eternity with regret pray and say god as apollos even though he was mighty in scripture yet he submitted himself to priscilla and aquila to be taught the word of the lord i'm submitting to this discipleship I will be serious. I will be consistent. I will be punctual. I will not go back. I will not go back. Some of you, you are supposed to be healing the sick by now. But you are still getting sick, taking malaria drugs. It is time to rise up in destiny and be who you are meant to be. Ah. Ah. Jesus. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now listen, I'm going to pray for you. And I want you to believe in the prayer I will pray for you. It's going to be short. But the Lord who sent me, the one that preached the, the, his word to us, he will answer this prayer. So lift up your hands, be focused, and when you hear the prayer, just say amen. Father, I present everyone here and those online following us to you who have heard your word tonight. I pray oh God that your mercy prevail over judgment. Yeah. Whatever that has become a distraction in the life of anyone here that has stopped them from fulfilling the divine destiny. I decree and declare they are ended in their life now. Yeah. Powers, forces, principalities ancestral spirit water spirit spirit of manipulation witchcraft fighting walking warring against them from focusing 
humbling themselves, yielding to discipleship, and following you diligently. Father, I bind, I cut them off, I cast them out of their life and waste now in the name of Jesus. Amen. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost upon my life, I shift you supernaturally. Amen. Spiritually, be shifted now. Amen. Those of you struggling in your prayer life, come on, receive fire, fresh fire Amen. on your prayer altar now. Amen. Somebody here, the Lord is bringing it to my heart. You used to prophesy before. You used to prophesy during prayer as you be anointing will come upon you. That thing has, has left you several years ago. The Lord is restoring it now. Amen. That gift of prophecy, the hand of God is upon your life for it to be restored back. And in the same spirit, whatever any of you has lost in this place spiritually physically materially that will help you in your destiny journey come on let it be restored now Amen. some relationships that would have helped you in this journey you despised it you refuse out of pride to yield to it you you, you have not become committed to the discipleship that will help your life that spirit of unseriousness, I curse you. I cut you off from these ones. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. There are some of you that are in lack. But the reason why you are in lack is that your spiritual life is scattered. You are not standing well spiritually. And that's how the, the lack is a consequence of the spiritual disalignment. Come on, I decree and declare, you are getting aligned spiritually now. And by that, I judge the spirit of lack and poverty, confusion and trouble, distraction and discouragement, depression in your life. I curse that spirit. All of them is cut off from you now. Amen. Those of you that have lost focus, I refocus you by fire. Amen. By the hand of God, I put you back in the track. Amen. 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 Apollos was spiritual. He was led by the Spirit to come to Ephesus. And when he came to Ephesus, he has the courage to start. He didn't procrastinate. Every spirit of procrastination, every spirit that makes you carnal, he was mighty in scripture. Every spirit that makes you lazy, not to read the, the scripture, to pay attention. Come on, be bound and be cut off and be cast out of these ones. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Receive that grace in the life of Apollos. Receive that grace in the life of Apollos. From today, as God has spoken to us from that point, I decree and declare that whatever that was true about Apollos becomes true for you now. I see heart transformed, changed. I mean literally transformed. And when there is spiritual alignment, come and see physical manifestation. And because of this spiritual alignment, physically you are empowered. Your business is having a new turn from today. Your, the work of your hand is getting blessed now. Amen. Who is that person here that has a pain, a sickness in your right leg? That sickness is gone now. Amen. The healing fire of the spirit just touched that sickness now. That sickness is gone. And by the reason of that spirit of healing, come on, every other sickness here, whether it is a pain, whether it is hyania, whether it is ulcer, whether it is whatever that is troubling any one of you here in the name of infirmity, come on, by authority in the name of Jesus, I command you, spirit of in, 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 infirmity, demon of darkness, go in the name of Jesus Christ. You are healed. You are healed. You are healed. I say you are healed. Every one of you sick in this hall, those online, you are healed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Next Sunday, part two. I want you to prepare. I've said it before now. Join us in the seven days fasting. This is a season. The season began. I say write your prayer request down. And pray with it at least one hour at a stretch from tomorrow to Sunday. Fast if you can do six to twelve, six to three, six to six. Come with that request. 
on Sunday. Read at least seven chapters of the Bible per day. I hope you can do that, knowing that Apollos was mighty in the scripture. I hope you are challenged to do that now. Make out time to do that. Obey. And let's see what God will do next Sunday. Please listen. What we are doing, we don't just wake up and say, season of supernatural. No, 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 no. These things are what the Lord himself is saying to us. Last Sunday, I told us that I saw a cloud of darkness. Thicker in this particular quarter than last quarter. Did you hear me say that last Sunday? And I prayed. I said, God, what do we do? He said, bring season for supernatural shift to the first eight days of the um, second quarter from Sunday to Sunday. That's what, that's what we are doing. Last, last quarter, you know the way we did it. But God is dynamic. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So follow this program and let's see how far God is going to take us. Lift up your hand again. Father, I bless your people today. I bless your people today. I bless the works of your hands. I bless their spiritual life. Those of them that are struggling spiritually, that struggle ends now. Fire comes back to their altar now. They will enjoy Bible reading and study now. And from now, the burdens of their hearts are lifted. Prayers they are praying before now are answered. In this season of supernatural shift, let every one of us be shifted from where we are to where we are supposed to be. Wave that hands and say, Father, thank you.